Kia ora, I'm Erin J Doyle. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the bookshelf book tag by A Wandering Mind. <sighs> Finally, I've said Awakening Mind like three times now. <sighs> anyway, hopefully I can speak more accurately in this video than the previous one. Things are not currently looking too well for that. But we're going to soldier on. <laughs> anyway, so, book tag. Right, let us get on with the questions. I may change the angle that the camera's at. We'll see how we go. Okay, actually, yeah, I think that's the first thing I'm gonna do because obviously these are just some of the books. I don't think you've seen the rest of them. Here we are on the dark side of the room away from the window with its ever fading, damaging, warping sunshine. Obviously, I can't do much about the lighting. It's, um, well, I live in a rat hole, frankly, so the lighting situation is never going to be ideal. So I have a, a light that I can adjust a little bit, but um, about the most I can do is make myself look slightly less ill. Anyway, let's carry on. We don't need to hear about that. Right, question one. How many bookshelves do you have? So I've got one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven bookcases. How many books are on your bookshelves? Or how many books you think you have? Um, I'm going to guess I have around 300. Could be four. Um, I'm gonna guess somewhere around the 350-ish mark, just to split it down the middle. Question three, how do you organize your books? Okay, so kind of by genre, and then also the books that I like the most go higher up. And the books that I'm least impressed with go further down, because if I love it, then I want to see it. Over here we have the bookshelves that you customarily see. These books, which look like they're pride of place because they're directly behind me when I'm filming, are actually not the good, the favourite, the loved. These are the books which have crossed me in some way. Books by problematic authors. Books where all the gays are evil or beaten or dead. Books where, I don't know, I managed to figure out the major plot twist by page three. Books where the dog dies, they go here. Because they're in the window. These are the books that are going to get sun damaged. So yeah, this is kind of the shelf of three stars and less. Question four. What is the oldest book on your bookshelf? I think there's a couple ways of answering this. So, first we've got the physically oldest, which would be slightly out of frame if we just go. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, so these are uh, my oldest books a little bit of thriller and mostly vampire. Curiosities of Natural History by Francis T. Buckland, 1883. The oldest as in earliest publication, um, which will be I know you're down here somewhere. The Bible doesn't count. <clears throat> the Art of War. It's significantly more than a thousand years old. I'm sure. I will find out on Goodreads. It's this old. And then the third way I think we can answer this question, the book that I personally have owned the longest. Bray Rabbit. I did an unhaul of children's books a few years ago and gave the vast majority of my surviving children's books to a friend's offspring um, 
this one survived. This was my first birthday present, so this is 36 years old. Well, I've had it for 36 years. Question 5. What is the newest book on your bookshelf? So I went book shopping yesterday. My most recent acquisition is three books. So I have Cinderella is Dead, which I ordered for my LGBT plus reading the last month. Only just arrived in the bookstore. I have mentioned that previously, moving on. Um, then I've got Little Eyes, which has like the teeniest, tiniest title. Um, like you kind of have to look at it for a second to find it. And it's just, it's weird looking. And then... I got the Midnight Library. Um, I do not consider the purchase of these to be in violation of my no book buying years. I was going to say year, but it's actually several years now. Um, because gift voucher. Question six. What is the longest book on your bookshelf? Excluding textbooks, obviously. Um, the winner at 812 pages. Vanny the Vampire, I think I gave this like two stars, maybe even one, really don't recommend. Question 7, what is the shortest book on your bookshelf? Okay, I have no idea. So these are the thinnest, but these are hardbacks, so let's see. First we have the yellow wallpaper at... 55. <clears throat> Travels in the land of serpents and pearls at 56. Okay, it's out of the running. Buddhism for bears. I don't know if this one even counts. I mean, it's kind of pictures, but never mind. Oh, we're in the 70s. Oh. Warning when I am an old woman, I shall wear purple. This one might just win because it's a poem, so of course it's going to be very short. Okay, it lacks page numbers. I'm not going to count it, it's out. And finally, Goblins. Which is at... Also no page numbers, to hell with it. Our winner is the yellow wallpaper. <laughs> Question 7. What is the predominant genre on your bookshelf? fantasy. I'm fairly confident of this because these, what are we, five bookcases are fantasy except for the top row and I think this section here. So this is all sci-fi fantasy which I think probably outnumbers all the other books quite comfortably and I would say that fantasy is slightly more abundant than the sci-fi within that but there are also books which kind of bridge the two genres. So if we kind of grip in sci-fi fantasy, then yeah, almost five bookcases worth. Obvious winner. Question number nine. Have you done a bookshelf tour? No. Question 10. Go on a random number generator and talk about the book that corresponds with that number. Okay. Um, I don't know how many books I have, so I can't just generate a number between one and whatever it is. So what I'm going to do is go random number for sh bookcase, and then another for shelf, and then book within shelf. So I'm going to start numbering from off camera at number one, and then around this way. Okay, so let's go. Random number. Generator. So you want between 1 and 11. 4. Let's go to bookcase number 4. Um, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4. This is going to be bookcase number 4. And it has 4 shelves. So generate please thank you okay number two one two three four five six seven eight nine ten books all of the same series so this is going to be weird 
Okay, book number four. Book number four is A Corner's Search, continuing the amazing adventures of the Unicorn Girl. Um, I can't remember what this one specifically is about. This series is about um, a group of, I think they're like miners who work on asteroids or something. They find, like, you know, a space pod with an infant in it, and um, she's an alien with, like, hooves and a horn, um, and they raise her, and the series is basically about her growing up, finding her people, and then various adventures with freeing slave children on one planet that's quite evil, um, finding her family, the other alien race, which caused the various events which led to her family releasing her out into the universe, blah blah blah. This one is getting into the origins of her people. Really quite hard to talk about it at any length without spoilers of doom. Um, but yeah, basically space unicorn people and um, the discovery of how they came to exist. I have read the entirety of the series and the trilogy which followed on from it, so I did really enjoy it, but oh, it has been a few years. I see I forgot to cut out the emergency evacuation procedures on my front door. Question 11. Do you have fan merch or any other decorations on your bookshelf? <sighs> I'm going to combine this question with number 12, which is, show us your bookshelf. So, I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and um, probably breathe loudly into the microphone as I show you my bookshelves a little bit more up close. Starting at bookshelf one, you've all seen it. There's my initials, there's my teapot, there's a fascinator, there's All Might, and there are the books which have displeased me in one way or another. The ending has been predictable, the language has been annoying, the villain didn't get his comeuppance, the dog died, the author turned out to be a monster, etc. Alright, then we have a shelf that's almost purely decoration, with some journals, some poetry, and toga from My Hero Academia. Speaking of which, then we have a shelf of My Hero Academia manga, with, um, this is a thing one of my friends gave me when I graduated from my masters. Then we have, um, what is this? Nonfiction and this. Um, so I can't remember what her name is in Japanese but apparently it roughly translates to Miss Pussy. She is a vulva. She um, lives underneath a woman's dress and she decides one day to go out and see the world for herself and she doesn't understand why people won't say her name. Then we have the shelf that you never get to see because it's directly by my, behind my head because this is reflective and it's not actually a good look in videos. And then we've got Spanish books and stuff. The previous mentioned one attempt at being aesthetic green shelf Featuring random turtle junk, graduation teddy. This is just a little random jar of beads with a focus, come on, a um, wooden sphere that my father made, which gets pushed quite far back so it's protected from the sun because the different pieces of wood will become unlaminated if it gets overly heated. And then we have art supplies, we have stuff, we have books I've unhauled, we have bubble wrap, we have a hairdryer, we have tea cozies. Moving on. Bookcase number three, which is also right inside the front door and so is also a depository of crud. Um, no ornaments. Moving on. Next bookcase, we have the uh, most commonly worn jewellery, work keys, sunglasses, things that I need at the front door. And then some books. These books are all 
greatly enjoyed some of them I just can't really pick the genre all of them I want near eye level then we have a snowman who is also one of my father's works he hasn't made another one it doesn't fit in with any of his other work I love it dearly right going down we have sci-fi featuring more random jewelry as well as a collection of thunder eggs from a mine in australia I next up we have sci-fi featuring a tiny care bear sci-fi moving towards fantasy featuring hooker the first thing i ever saved up and purchased with my pocket money as a very young child next we've got a stone from pompeii it looks like it's not going to be in focus. My camera's just not liking it. Um, so the red and white, reddish and white material looks like volcanic rock. But if you turn it over, it's got this grey colour. So, yes, it looks like volcanic material. But when you put a little bit of acid on it, this fizzes. Which tells you that it has a high amount of, oh, having to remember back several years, um, calcite in it. Which means that this is actually a piece of limestone so i think what this is is a piece of limestone which would be the country rock in that area that's been splashed with volcanic material when um, the eruption occurred i think then we've got more fantasy with a little um mustard pot i gather is what this is supposed to be with its little spoon um and a little ceramic owl reading a medical textbook. I don't think this will focus. Nope. Not going to focus to hell with us, apparently. Then we have a mug with crud. Random jewellery. Next up we have Aikido, she is a lioness, and according to one of my sisters, she is my totem animal. And then we've got a collection of pens, also my father's handiwork. Actually the middle one was uh, my sister's, she made it with him. Uninteresting. Then we've got the not bookshelf that contains Royal Albert. Okay, now we're getting into my TBR shelf. So we've got my expired passport. Didn't see any point in renewing it. This is actually a map of the Camino de Santiago, which I have yet to frame. Um, thingy, medal from a race last year. Um, this is difficult to open with one hand. Hang on. This is Family Crest, also out of focus. Focusing on little things is apparently not my camera's uh, favourite activity. Random junk. Um, and this um, contains a, I would estimate roughly 100 year old, 130 maybe, uh, pocket watch, which I never wear even though it's neat then we've got um junk this is actually various knickknacks not going to open it because oh maybe i will so in here we've got um a watch and a seashell and my high school id cards <laughs> and this is just some paint brushes and some napkins that i use for painting this is actually a pen um, then we go down, we've got some more thunder eggs, also out of focus. Who needs to focus? Um, this is <clears throat> a monster wearing a cactus costume to protect it from the terrifying scary world. I have a pink one as well, which lives at work and is my PCR idol. I have written a poem about it. You can, I think, access it via my website if you're interested. And this is a piece of a lid of a jar that I'll show you in a minute. Random thing with money in it. More junk. Okay, last bookcases. 
assorted crap. A sand dollar, which can live here now, I think. And more junk. And that is the end. That's the end of the tag. Hopefully I can put my colossal amount of footage into some kind of sensible, pretty order. We'll see. Hopefully there's not too much garbage obscuring the views of my books if you were here only for the book aesthetics. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you're new here, hit subscribe. Do all of the things. They really help me out. And I'll see you next time. Bye! Of the night. Oh my fucking god, this is awkward. Trying not to ruin everything I own. Okay. <laughs>